Father, Son, Holy Spirit. While all three elements of the Trinity are important figures, the Holy Spirit is a prominent theme throughout the entire Bible, from beginning to the end. We see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the author writes about a breath, a wind, or a spirit of God moving across the water. This theme does not end when Genesis does, but rather it continues on throughout the entire Bible. We see Jesus, we see Martha, Mary, we see the disciples call upon the Holy Spirit to aid them in their ministry. I don't know about you, but this seems to be an almost lost and forgotten element of Christianity today. Scott McKnight and his book, Open to the Spirit, begins to explore and discuss what does it mean to be open to the Holy Spirit? What does that look like in today's modern context? So join me as we begin to explore what it is like to be open to the Holy Spirit. Christians today want to understand. We want to be in control of our theology. We want to know exactly what we're worshiping. We want to be able to wrap everything up in a nice little neat box. We like to be able to go to church. And when we leave church, have a message in our back pocket, but we don't want too much to radically change. That's precisely the problem with trying to understand the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's beyond comprehension. We can never fully capture or understand the Holy Spirit. Rather, Scott McKnight describes time and time again, what we ought to do is simply ask for the Holy Spirit, ask to experience the Holy Spirit. While we may never know exactly what it is, we can know some characteristics. We can know some things to look for, but never expect to fully comprehend or to fully capture the Holy Spirit, because that's not going to happen. So if we know that the Holy Spirit is part of God's Trinity, but we know that we'll never fully understand or be able to capture the Holy Spirit, where do we turn to for guidance? Where do we find the answers of exploring what is the Holy Spirit in our life? Scott McKnight proposes that if we're to discover the Holy Spirit, we must look no further than Jesus. Once we do that, the gate becomes open and we can discover who the Holy Spirit is and who we become when we embrace who God made us to be. You see, Jesus fully embraced the Holy Spirit. And because of that, they were divinely intertwined. So when we begin to analyze Jesus, we can, in some ways, see what it's like to have a lifestyle that fully involves the Holy Spirit in all activity. Therefore, Jesus really is the perfect example of what it's like to live a life that's fully connected to the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with Jesus Christ as our lens, directing us towards the Holy Spirit, we should engage in a set of spiritual exercises. The type of spiritual exercises that one might pick up in a standard Christian spirituality course. Go figure! But in all reality, I'm talking about things such as praying in creative ways, reading the Bible in creative ways, and meditating. All of these things are great, but McKnight argues if we do them without the Holy Spirit, they are in vain. In other words, any act of trying to relate to the divine as a Christian simply is without purpose or falls flat if we do not have the Spirit at the center. Once we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives, things do not remain the same. We are transformed into new beings, beings of Christ. That is what separates us from the rest of society. 
McKnight argues that once we receive the Holy Spirit, our old lives change into something radically different and powerful. Just like the scripture describes countless amounts of people who cast out demons, who speak in tongues and perform all sorts of miracles. Having the Holy Spirit transform our lives gives us a great new connection to God that comes with a whole new set of powers and abilities. Now look, I get it. This is kind of weird and you, you might be a little bit skeptical. I know I was at first. In some ways this talks about getting superpowers from above. It's so non-traditional, it's so non-Western. Yet, Scott McKnight gives narrative after narrative, story after story of people who have experienced the Holy Spirit. Not only in the Bible, but people that still experience the Holy Spirit today in profound ways. I didn't really know if I wanted to believe. I mean, God working through people like you and me in miraculous ways like they're described in the Bible, it seemed a little far-fetched. But as I continued to read Scott McKnight's book, I found myself becoming more open to the Spirit, as the title suggests. I began to say the prayers aloud that McKnight would end each chapter with. And that's when it happened. I'd been asleep for hours, but around midnight, I sat straight up in bed and felt God's presence in a profound way, which I can hardly begin to describe, but I'll do my best. The Spirit is alive and well, my good and faithful servant. Upon praying, the words of praise have not left my lips. My mind continues to circle the refrains, Oh God, you are good to me. Oh God, you are good to me. And all your promises are yes and amen. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling overjoyed in the Spirit of God dwelling in me. I cannot sleep because of my renewed relationship. I felt inspired to read the Bible. So, of course, I, I randomly selected a scripture to read from. Opening up the Bible randomly, I found Acts 1, which began to describe the Holy Spirit moving upon people. I was completely reaffirmed in this moment. That the Spirit has an active role in my life, in my soul, and in my being. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, ruler and master of all, I am redeemed. I am renewed. I am alive. Yes and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus my God. Hallelujah. So no. Even upon completion of Open to the Spirit by Scott McKnight, I still have not received any new superpowers. I have not been able to pray in tongues. I have not been able to lay hands on somebody and see they have new and restored vision. I'm not saying that's impossible. It's just not been my experience thus far. However, what I do know is that through being more open to the Holy Spirit, I've had some really cool moments with God. I've had moments that I otherwise might not have ever experienced. And it all became through a little prayer, through inviting God to be part of my life in a more active way. So I would recommend this book, Open to the Spirit by Scott McKnight. If you're interested in transforming your times of spirituality into living, active moments with God.